At the moment, it looks like Fabiano Caruana is playing the best chess in the world. He's currently in the Norway Chess Classic. He's in first place, and in today's game, he has the black pieces against my favorite player, Alareza Ferrugia, and uh, he plays the French defense, a very aggressive try. Let's jump right in. Alareza has white, Fabiano Caruana has black, and Alareza plays e4 and e6, the French defense, played by Caruana. D4, D5, and knight to C3, the absolute main line of the French defense, playing for the sharpest variations. Knight to F6, of course, there's the winner with bishop to B4, but this is the more classical approach. And E5, uh, the main line, Steinitz line, uh, is played by Ferrugia. Knight to D7, and here basically we have the classic French structure with the locked pawns. Black usually attacks the structure with C5 first, and then f6 later from the back and then the front f4 if left alone white will play f4 f5 and create serious central and kingside pressure on black's position so black has to keep white occupied Caruana plays c5 attacking the base of the pawn chain knight f3 defends it knight c6 attacks it again bishop e3 defends it again so we can see the tension building around the d4 square and here, cd4 is played by Caruana. Black has a lot of options here, but this is definitely a main line. And after knight d4, he plays a bit of a side line, but a move that's becoming much more popular at the highest levels, queen to b6. Uh, aiming at the b2 pawn, this is somewhat reminiscent of the poisoned pawn variation in the Nidorf, where white voluntarily gives up the b2 pawn to the queen, but then plays for the attack afterwards. And... Uh, a3 can be played here with the idea that after queen b2, knight to a4 traps the queen. So usually black would just play bishop to c5. But uh, uh, Ferruzja plays the, the main line here, which is queen to d2, allowing Caruana to take the b2 pawn, but then he's going to play for the attack uh, later and kick the queen around. Queen takes on b2, rook to b1, queen goes to a3, of course. And now... One of the first surprises of the game, knight c to b5. It's the queen and also threatens knight to c7 check, forking the king and the queen. The main move here, by the way, is bishop to b5, sort of pinning both knights and putting uh, pressure on black that way. Uh, but knight c to b5, that's a difficult move also. Queen takes a2, so Caruana is counterattacking the rook on b1. Uh, so he doesn't have to worry about knight to c7 check immediately. That rook moves to d1, and now he does. Now the rook, knight is threatening to go to c7 and win the rook, so the rook moves to b8. But the knight still gets to go to c7 with check, and that means Ferruzja has put Caruana's king in the center of the board, and uh, he'll be able to attack the king in the middle, king to d8, and now the knight comes back. Mission accomplished, taking away the castling rights of Caruana's king. A knight to c5. This knight is aiming for the e4 square where it will gain a tempo against white's queen. So bishop to d3 is played to help control the e4 square, but you get a chance to rob your opponent of the bishop pair and a strong light squared bishop, and Caruana does that. He takes the bishop on d3. You don't want to take with a c-pawn because then after queen d2, king d2, uh, the pawn that black grabbed earlier, he's actually up two pawns for the moment, would mean a very strong endgame. So he doesn't want to do that. He wants to keep queens on the board, so he plays queen takes knight instead. And in this position, uh, this has been reached, queen to a5 check, king to f2 was played. But in this game, the novelty, uh, Caruana plays bishop to d7. It's a pretty natural move, just getting the bishop off of the back rank. And if Ferruzja would have castled, they'd have an equal position here, but instead he jumps in with knight to d6. Uh, aiming at the f7 pawn, which would be a fork of the king and the rook on the other side of the board, but basically inviting Caruana to take that knight and get rid of that dark squared bishop and hope the pawn at d6 can cause him some discomfort. So Caruana does that. He takes the knight and pawn takes. And black has a very strong structure here. Um, basically, Ferruzja has put all of his eggs in the checkmate basket. He has to attack that king in the middle of the board because. Other than that, Caruana has every other advantage in the position, including material, but the king is in the middle. That's the real uh, critical issue. Queen to c4. Caruana would love to trade queens here. It'd be an easy endgame 
So Rusia avoids that. Now F6 beginning to build in the center. Perhaps he can play E5, gain some space. Knight takes C6, check was played, and then he decides to take with the, uh, the B pawn. And this is giving a pawn back. He's giving the A7 pawn back because of the immediate move queen to A5 check, which was played. And uh, Bruzja attacks the king and the pawn at A7. The king moves to E8. And then he takes the pawn. Now here is a very critical moment from Caruana. And it's an illustration of how strong his chess is right now. He plays the rook to B2. Now this is a big sacrificial move. Uh, because he's actually sacrificing this rook on h8 to a tactic. And of course, he knows that. But he's saying that his pressure against white's king on e1 is so great that he can actually give up that rook and still be better in this position. And computers do concur, and they recommend bishop to d2 uh, for Alarezi, that that was the best move. But uh, Ferruzja decides to go ahead and take that rook uh, with queen to a8 check. That's why the king has to move and the rook gets picked up. King f7 and queen takes h8. So Ferruzja has a lot of material. The only question is, can he survive black's attack? Caruana plays queen takes c2 with the obvious threat of queen to e2 mate. So bishop to d2 to block that attack. But queen goes to e4 with check. King to f1, queen to d3 check. The king comes back to e1. So they could repeat. But the question is, being a rook down, how is Caruana going to break down White's defense so that he can get at this king on e1? And he doesn't want the draw. He likes his position, and he goes ahead and plays c5, advancing that c pawn, feeling like he has enough pressure that uh, he'll be able to win even down the rook. h4 is played by Ferruzja, and this is a tricky move. If he were to be able to play queen to d8, let's say, uh, then he would be able to hold the position. The queen can go to e7 with check, and then the h-pawn can advance, and it would be just enough to hold. Um, so in this position, Caruana cannot waste any time, and he plays bishop to b5. Now he's threatening queen to e2 checkmate because of the queen and the bishop battery. The king goes to f2, but that means he's giving back material. Uh, he's going to lose the bishop on d2. Rook takes d2 check, rook d2, queen takes d2. King to g3, queen to e3 check, forcing uh, the king goes to h2, then queen takes f4 check, king to g1, and uh, he could just take the pawn at d6, but Caruana sees a way to, even, to gain even more material. First he checks on d4, that forces the king back to h2, and then queen to h4 check, king g1, and then he repeats the moves, and then when king goes to h2, queen to e5 check, and then he gets all of those pawns. And after rook takes h7, Caruana plays queen to f8. And that forces the exchange of queens. And uh, in this position, if he were to take, these pawns would be, the rook and pawn would be no match for the bishop and five pawns. It would clearly be over. So in this position, Alareza Ferrugia did resign. Caruana won and is now firmly in first place in the Norway chess classic. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon.